we're living in a time when the world is so polarized and so limited in our ability to converse. What I mean by that is you're either on one side or you're on the opposite pole of that. And um, I have some good news today. And that good news is that God is still in control. As children of God, we must find ourselves on the side of God. God never takes your ability to choose. You can decide to do your own thing uh, you can decide that you don't want to accept the truth of God's word or that your opinion is actually greater than what the word of God says. And God will cause it to rain on the just and the unjust because that's just how big he is. In today's politics, we have rehearsed to the point of intolerance that if you have a dissenting opinion, then you must be totally no good. No one person can own truth. Jesus says, I am truth. And he gives himself for all. I may, without attempting to be controversial, prick some, some of those that have opposite opinions. But I really do love you. All right. Let's go to work here. I've been uh, amazed at a few things uh, this past week, but I will limit myself to what we want to talk about, not cutting off what belongs to God. And you must understand that whoever is in charge of the vocabulary wins the argument. And that's the reason people seek to find the right words to create an opinion that's hard to be challenged. So when you hear that a woman has a right to choose what to do with their body. That is true. I ain't getting no amens from nobody. 
That's true. And that's the reason the argument is cropped in that matter. Because who can argue with you having the right to choose? That is what God gave us. The right to choose. Joshua told the children of Israel after they had conquered Jer Jericho, listen, if you want to serve the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, go right ahead. But before we move any further, I need you to choose ye this day <laughs> whom you're going to serve. When they were on See, I'm trying to stay low because I could be very definitive. When they were on the Mount Carmel, Elijah said, How long halt ye, O Israel, between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal is God, serve him. But you got to make a choice. God has given us the ability to choose. So when the argument is cropped in a manner where the woman has the right to choose what she will do with her body, she's absolutely right. But once she is pregnant, she's not just choosing for her. Hmm. Let's go back to Psalm. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of thy youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb. So now you could say, well, the child, you know, he's, he's a child, the child of the Lord. But he, he included the fruit of the womb. He went all the way to the womb. It's his. Now, it's not about, well, I, I'm being very deliberate, so, you know, you'll, it'll be very difficult for you to find a clip that will be anything other than what I'm saying. We're talking about two different things. The first thing, well, let, let me deal with this. The argument from the left to those on the extreme right is the extreme right is pushing no more abortions. Thank God. that the murdering of children who could not defend them for themselves, or fend for themselves, has stopped. Now, the church, hold on, the church ought to be happy. Y'all not that happy. <laughs> and that is what is so disheartening, is because what is in the world 
has seeped into the church. I'm going to preach in a moment because y'all going to make me preach in a moment. Um, what is in the world, the psychology, the philosophical understanding of what is in the world has seeped into the church so that the church is not governed by the kingdom constitution. But it's governed by the pressure from around us. Your choice, beautifully and fearfully and wonderfully made woman, your choice is not to get pregnant. See, now ain't nobody pushing that. See, if we, if we follow the book, then the problem goes away. Flee fornication. See, I try to preach nice, but y'all won't let me. All right? Okay. Exodus, the 20th chapter and the 13th verse. Thou shall not kill. And there's a period behind that. Jesus wept is the shortest verse in the Bible, but it only beats this one by two words. Thou shall not No matter how you slice it, abortion is killing. Whether in, it's the first four weeks, seven weeks, 14, whatever, abortion is a nice word for killing. End of story. Now, you have those on the far left hollering at those on the far right saying, well, y'all say y'all want life, you pro-life, but then you won't help the child with food and, and education and so forth, and they're right. But those are two separate arguments. We should. I remember when Barack Obama was running for president, and I found myself at this large church. I think, Eleanor, but did you go with me? I don't know, but David was with me in Louisiana. And a uh, huge church pastored by... Uh, this white man, wonderful, wonderful reputation in it. And so we went to we went to we went to dinner. And I'm surrounded by white pastors and I you know me, I'm sitting there with Ruth Chris and cutting our steaks and whatnot. I said I looked at him and said, All right, my white brothers. I need all y'all to do something for me. What is it, Pastor Wyness? I want y'all to vote for Obama. I did tell you I was in Louisiana, didn't I? And immediately, no, 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 can't do that, can't do that. I looked at him and said, y'all get on my nerves. Y'all, did I say that, David? 
I said, y'all get on my nerves. Y'all always talking about can we come together and do stuff. Here's an opportunity for you to inspire a black boy or a black girl, because I never dreamt in my life I'd ever see a black president. That wasn't even a dream. And one of the arguments that one of the pastors gave was, I can't do it, Pastor Wine. I said, why not? Because he's for abortion and so on. I said, listen, we ain't talking about abortion right now. We talking about I'm certain that they didn't vote for him. So I don't want you to think that I was effective in that argument. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make is that a lot of times we give lip service, but it's attached to something else. And no argument can stand on its own merit if you're pork bellying all of these other issues. And that's what folk in our Congress and in our Senate and in our offices of influence and in our judicial system, they don't stand alone. When an individual, I can't tell you how many folks that I have interviewed that say one thing privately but go along with the herd publicly. Y'all, I need y'all to hear what I'm telling you. It means something. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend any time on that, but I don't know if you've been following the, 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 the uh, January 6th hearings. You need to take that. I mean, it's very interesting because here are people that know they are purporting a lie, but because of the peer pressure, will not stand to be different. I'm getting ready to go somewhere with this. And they'll say things like, yeah, I believe that, but I also believe that everybody has their opinion and everybody, if that's the case and you do not have the intestinal fortitude to stand on what you believe, then what good are you? I can't allow my religious beliefs to sway my vote or to, well, what good are you? Why are you there? You're just like everyone else. If you believe that it's wrong to abort children, to kill children, if you believe thou shall not kill, it didn't say thou shall not kill if it's not, thou shall not kill unless it's inconvenient. I don't hear nobody talking to me. I knew I, knew I wasn't gonna go long, that's why I had not sang a soft song. And I'm not saying that the intent of those that have won the victory, this is a great day in the life of those children that we never knew. The argument is not if life begins at conception? Because the answer to that is life begins before conception. <laughs> Jeremiah 1 and 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, 
God was talking to Jeremiah. And he said, Jeremiah, before I formed thee, Lord have mercy, in the belly, I knew thee. Oh, come on now. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So the power and the wonder and the brilliance of God happens before. Yeah. You have anything to do with it. I hear you. I'm coming down your street. Just stay right there. Romans, the eighth chapter, says, for whom he foreknew. He predestinated. And those whom he predestinated, he called. And those whom he called, he justified. And those whom he justified, he glorified. You don't end in the state of glorification without including the state of foreknowledge. Now, now I'm, I'm coming to my, to the first stop of my clothes. I have several stages tonight, today. The first stop is God foreknew. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm intentionally being deliberate. God foreknew. And because he knew Jeremiah before he was formed in the belly, which means before conception, God knew Jeremiah. He foreknew. And yet, in all of his brilliance, he never took away from you choice. So then, you have the ability to stop what God intended. He told Adam and Eve, he said, of every tree of the garden you can eat, but of the tree in the midst of the garden, of the tree of, the, of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat it. And yet, he didn't stop them from making a choice. Now, when we make the choice, we have to suffer the consequence. I don't want to go into the psychological Misgivings. Ah, Lord. Say, move on, Pastor. All right, I'm going to move on. But what God foreknew, you have the ability to block. I don't say this as a tease, but think about it. The millions upon millions of children that we chose to stop 
Many of them could have had the cure for cancer. But we blocked it. It wasn't that God wouldn't have sent it. But we made a choice to protect our reputation because we didn't want to be looked at as a I, 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 I'm so happy that we serve a great God. And I love Sister Latanya Blanks. That's my daughter. Down there in Bessemer, Alabama. And she gave her testimony here preaching. She said, abortion was my contraceptive. I know we want to talk about in the case of incest, in the case of rape, I got it. But that's not all the cases we get. <laughs> we have the power given to us by God to cut off what is his reward. So now when it is overturned, we want to take to the streets saying we don't care about God. We want to have our way. Oh, yeah. That's what we're saying. Now, we have no idea what God has designed or what he knew about that fetus. We had no idea of what God wanted to do with them. But he said that the children, they're a heritage of the Lord. And if we let, if we let it grow, he said, those children are going to fight the enemy in the gate. Except the Lord build a house. He that builds it labors in vain. That's the reason, hallelujah, we have to stay in constant communication as to what God intends for that child to be. I'm limiting my remarks today, my lesson today, my message today to that of children and those that have been taken from us in the womb. God says, I'm bigger than that. I sit on the other side of the beginning. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Jephthah. And Jephthah is not preached very often. He was the son of a harlot. He was the son of a person that did not belong to Israel. But God saw him before he was born. And God made him a warrior. And so, when Israel's back was against the wall, 
and they needed somebody that could fight even though they had made fun of him, even though they had ridiculed and ostracized him. When it came time, when no one else could lead them and no one else could win the victory, they found him and said, I need you to be a captain for me. Lord, have mercy. We don't know. I suspect that since the Roe versus Wade has been overturned, we don't know who's going to be born now. But based on the law of averages, we're going to get some more help here. I say that because it hits real personal. The mindset of America should not be how can we legally kill unborn babies, but how do we nurture and give life. Let's think about this. Why are there so many teenage adolescent suicides? Because we decided life really isn't important. You cannot deny challenge and go against what God has said and think society is going to be just wonderful. When you disobey God, there is a judgment. There's a judgment, folk. We're living in a day where folk do not want the consequence of their actions. They want to do whenever, whatever, however, and not pay a penalty for disobedience. Are you listening to me? Jephthah brought the victory. I close with this. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for our nations. We're going to pray for our mothers. There was a, a girl that was 16, around 15 years old. And she got pregnant. And I want you to understand that abortion is not new. The legalization of it is what's new. <laughs> she had a choice. She, sh she could have taken the easier route, the less shameful route, she could have had someone perform an abortion and got rid of the child because it was destined that that child would be an embarrassment. But she decided to have it. That child was my father. And when I look at 
what's going on. My grandmother was impregnated by the pastor's son. And her family was large in the church. And it was rough back in the 30s. But she had it. And now the fruit of her womb <laughs> produce ten children. And his name is known throughout the world. But had she made that other choice, I wouldn't be y'all pastor. Are y'all listening to what I'm telling you? You're not the only one that has faced difficulty or made a bad decision. But understand that God knows what you don't. I know we have those that have a different opinion. What about in the case of rape? What about in the case of incest? My answer to you is you'll have to come to another service to find out about that. <laughs> I want you to know there's an answer in the word. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not. I just don't want to keep y'all here. I want, to, I want to whet your appetite and make it unequivocally clear that because of that decision to overturn the legality of killing children, there's an added blessing that comes with that. Now, I know there are some well-meaning clergy folk that would argue with me and I'll take them on. But that is not the spirit of this lesson today. The spirit of this lesson today is do not cut off what belongs to God. He has the power and the ability to transform lives. You never know what God's going to do with it. You have no idea what God can do thank you Jesus. In the height of his popularity, I'm certain that the Christian church was praying for Paul, for God to destroy him. Lord, get Saul of Tarsus. <laughs> but they had no idea that he was born for the purpose that God had intended. Look at somebody and say, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up yet. Mishi and the Labo Sitaba.
you, you'll miss your education. You won't have the scholarship. You don't understand what it is to be a mother. You should, do, you should just go on and above. No, I can't. Because I can't compound the problem. Lift up your hands, all your gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. And the king. The king, the king. Everyone stand to you. Understand the kingdom constitution. When you have been bought with a price, ultimately, you have to follow God. Thank you, Jesus. There's so much I want to say. It's not that I'm stuck. I'm just trying to. To those of you that have made the wrong decision, you don't have to live in that decision. Just like the thief doesn't have to live in the fact that he stole something, there is redemption with the Lord. I don't hear nobody talking to me. And I want you to lift up your head. Because the light has come. We have to follow the kingdom constitution. We're not allowed to wallow in our mistakes. But pick yourself up and come boldly before the throne of grace that you might find mercy and grace to help I feel the presence of the Lord here the church has to stand up and be the church we can't crumble under the crucible of of pressure it was wrong before it's wrong now help me would you please if, if you know it when the saints go up to worship help me sing all of saints go up to pray. When the saints go up and pray. Is he raised? Every trap the enemy, trap the enemy set. set. It won't work. won't work. It can't work. battle yeah the king of glory shall come in Father we thank you for this time around your word and time of deep thought and deep reflection and we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the church would stand up and be the church.